that joining me now is the chairman of Witten Albion Football Club, Mr John Salmon. John, how are you, mate? Very well, Mike, apart from the result, obviously, that we've just had. Just yeah. lost to Whitby Town 2-0, but, um, you know, it was, it, was, uh, it was great to see everybody back. We had a gate of just under 400. Pitch was looking magnificent. And, you know, despite the result, everything has gone particularly well. And we were just saying, John, weren't we off here, that first game of the uh, Northern Premier League season, you're always looking to get a good result, but ultimately, because of everything we've all gone through throughout the coronavirus, just having a game on, having fans there, and the season starting, it's a victory in itself. It is, uh, undoubtedly, and it's, you know, it's been a long time. I think uh, March was when we played, late on in March, and that was an away game. So uh, it's just great to see everybody back. There's a buzz because we have recruited well. And, you know, it's, although it's, it's September, it's the first game of the season, the table won't lie. For, you know, the table can lie for a month, but it won't lie ultimately in May. The games will come thick and fast, and um, I'm, I'm quite happy with how we've, uh, how we've brought the quality in that, uh, that we need to compete. Yeah, and I think that's the big thing, isn't it? Because ultimately, a 2-0 defeat today at home to Whitby Town is frustrating, it's disappointing, but the recruitment and the, the conversations going off off the pitch about Witten and the, and the recruitment, the players you've brought in, has yeah. got to fill you with some excitement for the season to come. Well, I think when I was last um, speaking to you, you know, I was telling you that our financial position a year ago was very poor. This year, um, you know, I've been able to, 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 to put Witten on a much better business footing. Because of that, I'm able to go to the manager and offer him more money. And we brought Steve McNulty in, which raised a lot of eyebrows because with 500 um, games, 250 or so as a, as a professional and captain six teams and got promotion with five, that was the one that, uh, that people looked at and was, was a statement. But there were other players that we've brought in who, um, who were equally going to be as important to us. To us. The, 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 the thing is, we've got a, a squad now, so there's players that can come off the bench and make an impact and do something which the manager, to be fair to him, has not always had. Yeah, and I think you've hit the nail on the head with what you said about the league table can can probably lie for a month or two, but ultimately yeah. a defeat in the first game of the season isn't going to um, jeopardise the plans of moving forward. But the McNaughty signing has raised eyebrows. I've got to ask you, John, how did you pull that one off? Um, well, firstly, Carl and Gary knew him from Bursco days, um, so he was a personal friend. Uh, Steve wanted, he'd been at York, he'd just lost uh, in the playoffs. Um, he's, he's no spring chicken, but was looking to get into the uh, the coaching side as well. He became available. Uh, he came to watch us, and many of your listeners who, who travelled to watch Macclesfield Town the other night will see what a lovely stadium it is and nice pitch. Um, and we made him an offer, and it wasn't a fortune, but it, it enabled him to get involved on the coaching staff with Carl McCauley and Gary Martindale. And we're delighted that he that he said that he said yes. Um, so it goes back to the connection with, with as I say, the management team, and um, you know, for that reason, and of course our setup. Um, he's agreed to come. We're delighted to have him. And like you say, ultimately these type of signings are great. But I've got to ask you. The fans. The fans have been the ones that have been punished massively throughout the coronavirus. And ultimately, you've had nearly 400 people there today. I've yeah. had the privilege of coming up to Winchon Park on numerous occasions and seeing what a fantastic facility you've got. Just how difficult, though, or how much work has it been, John, uh, to get the ground ready for fans to be there? Very difficult, um, and I've got to give credit to Joe Heffy, who is our, if you like, COVID officer. Uh, she worked in Human Resources, and she has done an absolutely wonderful job in forming a COVID committee. And then we've had to go to the expense of ensuring safety for supporters as they come in. You know, with. Uh, track and trace, uh, perspex, uh, you know, and, and all of the relevant signs. And we've had, of course, the benefit of, I think, what, five or six friendly games where we put this into operation, only in the last two or three with, with supporters. But uh, it's been a hell of a lot of work, but it's a testament to to our COVID committee, if you like, and, and to Joe Heffy to get everybody ready. And people get used to it. The only difficulties we've had, we've had to employ more staff in the 
for instance, for example, a social club area, because sadly sometimes people don't always adhere to the guidelines and the rules. So we've had to bring some uh, COVID stewards in just to make sure people don't get too carried away, don't move uh, chairs and, and do what they need to do. It's more the bar area, but other than that, probably it's the, the, the safest environment to bring your children or your family because um, the um, the maximum we can have is 600. That may change because government policy changes every five minutes, unfortunately. Yep. But, <clears throat> but, but an, a, a non-league football match is one where you can go and stand in the corner and exercise social distancing and just enjoy a game of football, which that's what everyone here has done today. Yeah, and, and that's the main thing, isn't it? I was just going to say to you, from obviously being at the game yourself, John, today, how nice was it just to stand there sometimes and think, wow, fans back at football matches. It's it's just crazy, isn't it? That was absolutely fantastic. And as I say, in respect of the result, which is disappointing, I'm a winner. You know, I'm a scouser. I like to yep. win. But I've just said, um, well done to their chairman, well done to their manager. But I'm not going to, um, you know, I'm not going to say anything other than it was it was great to be back. You know, and, and, and as a football man, to feel, you know, that uh, you know the fans are back. Okay, we didn't get the results, but it was it was great to see everybody. Fantastic. And just finally, John, I've got to ask you the <clears throat> excuse me, elephant in the room question. Uh, Whitten Albion played Maxfield Town in the week in what could yeah. be the last game Maxfield Town Football Club ever play. And yeah. you run a very successful uh, business model and um, um, plan for Whitten Albion. How on earth does a football league club end up in this position when, I'm not saying it's easy because I know how hard you and your team work at Whitten, but if you can get it right... How has it gone so wrong at Macclesfield? It's not a, um, a one-sentence answer, that. I mean, you should be asking this, me this question after the watershed because I feel as angry about what's happened at Macclesfield mm. Town and other clubs as, as, as a lot of people, and certainly Macclesfield Town supporters, are feeling. I mean, to me, and I've got a connection with Macclesfield, I'm a Burnley fan, the football club is the focal point of the community. It's everything. It pulls people together, and in Witten's no different. The problem was, obviously, al Qaeda's come in, and to, let's, let's, let's be honest about it, he's been there for, what, 17 years um, with his brother, and I think maybe his father was involved. But there has been a lack of control, certainly a lack of teeth, I think, from the AFL. And, you know, it's only my opinion. I don't think they've covered themselves in glory the way they've handled the situation. Because if they'd have, if they'd have been stronger with uh, al Qadi some time ago, maybe it wouldn't have got to this. Um, and the way that they've policed the ownership and chairmanship of clubs is possibly something that needs looking at the same as happened at Berry, where the guy went in, I think, and bought the club for a, for a quid, but obviously wasn't able to um, to do anything after that. And, and I think, unfortunately, several clubs are going to go, more clubs are going to go this way. So it's the EFL. Unfortunately, the man at the helm, I've got to say, it's difficult to reconcile any of his actions with, with prudence, even sanity. You know, he's had ample opportunity to accept offers, which I know are on the table. I've, you know, I've read something on Alain Stick, which I think is unbelievably unfair on social media. John Askey being one. You know, he's quite entitled, having got promotion with a very small budget for your for your for Macclesfield Town Football Club to his to his contractual bonus. He's waited long enough for that. Joe Celia have met. You know, he, he put money on the table and met his wife Nicole. The, the good meaning football people but if the man at the helm is you know insane and that's what I'm saying you know he must be insane not to accept um, those kind of offers it's going to end up in a situation and I'm a solicitor where it goes before a judge for the thing the 12th time and Sadly, the the uh, the interests of creditors, whether that be HMRC or John Askey or others, uh, will outweigh the interest of, of keeping the club alive. Yeah, and I, <clears throat> to be fair, John, I, I couldn't have said it much better without getting myself in trouble. <laughs> um, <laughs> but ultimately, do you see, as as a football man, as a fan, but also as somebody who who supports running a football club, do you see any light at the end of the tunnel for Mac Town fans? Um, well, yes. Firstly, there's opportunity one, which would be a Phoenix club, which means that the owner goes and you start again. Whatever way you look at it, Macclesfield Town will survive in some form. It's too good a football club. The people are too good. It's too well supported. Um, Al-Qaeda, by the way, 
the court orders made, it's not a dead duck. And I believe he showed the judge a snapshot of £1.1 million pounds in his bank account. Well, the first question I'd ask as a lawyer is, why haven't you paid it and then sold the club on your, your terms, you know, to get the best deal you can? It is still for Alan Alcardi to, 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 to pay everybody off. And if he's prepared to do that, the order can be, to, can be rescinded and there is hope. But I rather doubt that is going to happen. The good news is I don't think Macclesfield Town, um, um, I think it's the council that own the stadium, is that correct? It's it not is, yes. yes that's so there's some room there. So it's a smashing football club. Uh, it won't die. It'll be there in whatever format. Um, but it, obviously a lot depends uh, uh, on Mr. Amar al what he does now. Because everything, if he doesn't move very quickly, will rest in the liquidator stroke administrator. And then sadly, um, that will be the end. And just finally then, John, I understand that you've made a bit of an offer to the to the Maxford Town fans because in, in between now and whatever may happen on Wednesday and moving forward, these guys want to see football. Yes, I have. I mean, as I said, I've got a, a very, very good relationship with the people there, and I know they are busting a gut and are heartbroken by what's happened, and the supporters are good. So so my offer is anyone who's got a Macclesfield Town season ticket, come and watch Whitney Albion. You'll be welcome. You won't pay any extra. All I ask is have a drink at the bar, watch some Sky television, bring bring a friend, um, and use our tea hut to get some food. And those who want to take advantage of that between now and the the end of October, um, get in touch with the club and we will make some provisional arrangements for, for supporters so they can come and watch a game of football and get behind our lads. Fantastic. That's John Salmon, chairman of Witten Albion Football Club. <clears throat> Excuse me, extending an offer to Maxfield Town fans. If between now and the inevitable or whatever will happen over the coming days, if you want to watch a game of football, get yourself over to Witten, show them a little bit of support, and they'll give you a bit back. Fingers crossed we will get some positive news through the week. Music on the way from Little Mix and the Smiths on Cheshire's at 106.9. 